Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words with me, your host, Kevin Treasure, author of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Our aim is to help people win in life through the power of their words. You are born to win. Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality with me, your host, Pastor Kevin Treasure, a.k.a. The Winner's Mentality, helping you win with your words. Amen. And the Bible says, must go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe in is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So we have a commission. Amen. How are we going to preach the gospel? By opening our mouth. Amen. There's power in the words that we speak. Amen. And my desire is to preach this gospel to let people know about the living God. That God sent his son in the world. Not to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And I'm here just to encourage someone out there, out there in podcast land, that you have a hope. Amen. And it doesn't matter who you are, God hears our cry. Amen. And today I just want to encourage someone today where we left off. We spoke about the faith of the centurion. I just wanted to stay right there about this same man, this centurion. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you because without you, we can do nothing. It's always good to welcome the Holy Spirit. Amen. Without him, we are nothing. We can do nothing. We are nothing without him. And I thank God because he knows why you're tuning in. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. And he knows what you're facing. I just want to pray for you right now. Father, I just want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for your listeners. I want to thank you and we praise you for this time that even now that it's spent to take out Lord, to listen to this podcast, there's something that they need, there's something that they're going through, there's something that they need to hear. You know what they have need of before they even ask. So I'm just asking that you meet them at the point of their need, that you'll beat their expectation, minister to their hearts, direct their steps, show them what it is that you'll have them to do, Lord God. Open their ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God, I thank you that their lives will never be the same again. You are the potter. They are the clay. So, Lord, I touch them and ask them and mold them in a supernatural way. Finish the work that you started in their life, Lord. Move by your power in their life, Lord God, and manifest yourself like never before. Holy Spirit, touch my lips even right now and speak through me, Lord God. Lord, I honor you. We bless you. And we just acknowledge your power, your presence, Lord, and your leading, your direction, Lord God. And we just give you thanks and we give you praise today as we go into your word we just honor you and we bless you and we exalt you today in jesus precious name amen and amen so today we're going to be talking about the centurion yes the same one when we left off and we're going to go straight back into matthew chapter 8 verse 5 and the bible says and when jesus was entered into capernaum there came unto him a centurion beseeching him begging him and like i told you last time listen the centurion is a man of great authority and remember he was the oppressor the romans were in control of the known world right then and they ruled with a fist of iron if you remember in the book of daniel when daniel saw the vision of him the feet of clay and mud and the the, the the shins of iron the legs of iron and he saw the head of gold and that represented each major world power that would come into being in the times to come and we know that babylon was gold amen and we had the the bronze and we had and but the iron represented the roman empire because their 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 weaponry their armor was made of iron so that shows you the the might of the roman empire and this man was a ruler of a hundred over a hundred so this man was saying listen I, i'm the oppressor but he recognized something about jesus and there's many people that sound on my voice you may not even be saved you may have a, a a desire to walk of the lord you may be doing things you shouldn't be doing but you know that jesus is lord and you know that you have a real love for him but you may not actually be living the life that he wants you to live and he's saying god i know that you're real but you know there's something about jesus that's different from everybody else you know he can touch your life you know that he's lord you know he's the son of god and this man recognized that jesus was the son of god he recognized that out of all the other prophets or all the other rabbis all the other teachers there was something different about jesus all the other rabbis were teaching and talking a good talk but they weren't demonstrating the power and i want to let you know that jesus is demonstrating demonstrating the power and he said he's the same yesterday today and forever he never changes and the same jesus that was working miracles and healing then is the same jesus that's working miracles healing and delivering raising the dead now amen he never changes so he recognized there was something different about jesus and he came to jesus beseeching him he didn't care about 
his clout. He didn't care about his reputation. And many people have got to understand when you come to Jesus, you've got to forget about yourself. Forget about your reputation. Forget about people's opinion of you. Many people don't want to give their life to the Lord because they care too much about what people think of them or what people might say, what my boyfriend might say, my parents might say, my friends might say. But this man had a need. And he didn't care what anybody thought about him. He didn't care. He said, listen, I have a need and I know that Jesus is the one who can fill it. And many of you need to be like that centurion. He'll say, listen, I've got a need. And I don't care what people say about me. I know that Jesus is the one that can fulfill my need. I know that he is the one that can fix my problem. I know that he is the one. He is the answer. He is my solution. So he forgot about himself. Forgot about pride. He forgot about who he is in his ranking. And he said, I need to come to Jesus. Yes, I know he's a Jew. And I know that I'm oppressing his people. But I've seen something different about him. And I'll let you know there's something different about Jesus that Muhammad can't do it, Confucius can't do it, Haile Selassie can't do it, all these other great men and all these other prophets cannot, people say that the prophets cannot do it, Jesus is the one that can change everything about your life. And he came to him and he said in verse 6 saying, Lord, my servant life home, sick of the palsy and grievously tormented he was paralyzed he was sick and he was paralyzed and he was grievously tormented he couldn't do it for himself but he was grievously tormented he could not move and there's some people they cannot do it for themselves but they need others to do it for them and there's some people they cannot pray for themselves so they need you to pray for them they cannot do things for themselves but they need you to do it for them and this man loved his servant and he said, I'm going to go to the person that can fix my problem. And this is when you've got a real friend. This is when you've got someone that really cares about you. When they know that you cannot do it for yourself, but they'll do it for you. And these are the friends that we need nowadays. We need people that will say, listen to me. I'm going to pray you through this. I'm going to get you through this. I'm going to help you through this depression. I'm going to help you through this anxiety. I'm going to help you through this low period in your life. I know the money is maybe funny, but I'm going to help you get your shopping. I'm going to help you pay your bills. I'm going to help you pay your mortgage pay your rent we need people that will see us in trouble and not just leave us in trouble but be that help in trouble and this man loved his servant and he came to jesus and said listen jesus i need my friend to get better i need him he cannot go for himself but i'm coming to you on his behalf and those are the friends that we need we see in the book of Luke, where the four friends carried another man that was paralyzed. When you cannot move and you cannot do it for yourself, you're going to need people to do it for you. I'm going to say that again. When you cannot do things for yourself, you cannot move and you feel maybe paralyzed in your life, you're going to need some people around you that are going to help you do it for you. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to say that again. You're going to need people around you that are going to help you do it for you. And the Bible said that these four friends dug up the roof of a man's house. They didn't know whose house it was. They didn't know if they were going to repair it for him. They didn't know. They just wanted to get this man in front of Jesus. And these people took a step of faith to say, listen, I don't care. We know we've got to forget our friend in front of Jesus. And these are the friends that we need. There was another woman, a Syphonician woman. The man who said, my daughter is grievously vexed with a demon. There was the man Jairus, a ruler of the Jews. And he said, my daughter is at the point of death. There are many people that came to Jesus on somebody else's behalf. And listen, that's intercession. And when we go into intercession, when we pray for other people, listen, we're saying, God, listen to my friend needs help. And we take on the infirmities. We take on the compassion. We have that compassion for other people. And we say, my friend needs help. They're at the point of death. And this man's servant was paralyzed and we've got to know that this must have been a really good servant because he's coming to him he's a captain of a hundred amen so he wasn't just a simple man this man was a centurion he's a captain of a hundred and he said listen my friend my servant is a point of death he's paralyzed he's tormented i can no longer stand to see him in this way and he came to jesus said jesus will you come and heal my friend and jesus simply says and Jesus simply says, where is it? Verse 7, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I want to let you know Jesus is still healing today. He's still setting the captives free today. 
He's still lifting the burdens, breaking the, destroying the yokes, amen. He's still raising the dead. He's still working miracles and signs today. And if someone's in doubt, let me tell you something now. Reach out to me, amen. www.kevintreasure.com. Info at decisionsdeterminedestiny.com. You can email me. I'm here to answer all your questions. I'm here to pray with you. I'm here to help you, amen. I'm here to help anybody that needs help. I want to let you know Jesus is still working miracles today. And if there's anybody at the sound of my voice and it's the air of your body that you cannot move, I speak healing in that area of that body right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I dare you just to move that hand, move that leg. I dare you to get up out of that wheelchair. God is still healing today. I speak healing against every paralysis right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where the doctor said there was no feeling, where the doctor said it wouldn't happen or you wouldn't walk or you wouldn't talk. I speak health right now in your body. I decree and I declare that you're speaking again. Where you've had a stroke or cancer has riddled your body and the doctor has said you cannot speak I decree and I declare that even now that your tongue is moving in the name of Jesus your lips are moving you are speaking in the name of Jesus I release the power of God upon your life right now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet I speak the healing power to be made manifest in your body even now in the name of Jesus I loose you from every paralysis right now in the mighty name of Jesus and I speak healing to your body healing in your legs healing in your ankles healing in your knees in the name of Jesus where you couldn't move that right side of your body because of a stroke I decree and I declare that you're moving right now by faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I release God's miracle working power in your body in the name of Jesus it's not by might it's not by power but it's by your Holy Spirit save the Lord so I thank God that even now that you're being healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release your healing power, God's healing power upon your body. And I thank you for a miracle taking place even now on this podcast for God's glory and God's honor. God, I thank you that you're doing it now in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. He said, I will come and heal him. And just like I'm not there, but I'm speaking God's word only. The centurion answered and said, said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. He said, I'm not worthy for you, for me to even come under your roof. What was he saying? He's saying, in fact, he's saying, God, I'm a sinner. Listen, I, I, I've done some things that I'm ashamed of. Listen, I've killed men. I, I, I'm brutal. Listen to me. I'm a leader of a hundred. I didn't earn these stripes by doing nothing. I've gone to war. I've cut off heads. I've killed people. I've maimed people. I've done some things that I'm not proud of. I'm not worthy that you sh- I should come. You should come under my roof. Listen to me. I've done some some things that I'm not proud of and there's many times I go out on the streets and I speak to many young people old people I speak to all kinds of people and they say preacher you don't know what I've done listen to me I told them straight and I looked them square in the eye I said you don't know what I've done listen to me whatever you've done God will forgive you he knows what you've done but yet he still loves you and he demonstrated that love when he died on the cross I don't care what it is you've done God will forgive you he knows all about you in fact he was there when you was doing what you was doing but the Bible says that when we, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it doesn't matter what you've done. God is saying, listen to me, I know all about you. The centurion man said, listen, I'm not worthy. Listen, I'm a sinner. I've done some things. I'm ashamed. Listen, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Listen, listen, I'm still living the life that isn't pleasing to you. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But this is what I want you to do. I just need you to speak the word only. That's all I need you to do. When you speak, things happen. If you just speak it, I believe that my servant will be healed. I have enough faith to believe because of my sinful state. But you'll have mercy upon my servant if you just speak a thing, if you just decree a thing, my servant shall be healed. And you don't even need to touch him. If you just say he's healed, if you just speak that he's healed, I see him moving. I see him walking. I see him talking. I see him coming out of torments. I see him coming out of sickness. I see him coming out of the dark place. I see him being healed. I see depression leaving. If you just speak, I see the anxiety leaving my life. I see me being totally whole in the name of Jesus. If you just speak and decree, I see everything coming to together if you just speak god if you just say it i know it will happen and listen to me the same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead is dwelling within me and us who are called by the name of the lord and if we just speak a thing we have authority we exercise our authority in christ jesus amen that if we just speak a thing 
It's going to happen in the name of Jesus. And there's some of you out there and you're saying, listen to me, you don't know what I've done preaching. I've done some bad things. I've fallen away. I've backslidden. Listen to me. I want to come back to the Lord. God is saying, come back. It's not too late. While you have breath, if you have breath, God is showing you mercy. Amen. The Bible says appointed once for man to die and after that, the judgment. There's no repentance in the grave. But if you're the sound of my voice and you are here and you are breathing, God is saying, I'll show you mercy. All you need to do is come back to me. It doesn't matter what you've done. In fact, simply, I see more miracles take place in the lives of those with simple faith than those who have been in church for years. There are some people that just come to God with honest and open heart, with childlike faith and say, God, listen to me, I don't deserve it. But if you just show me mercy, if you just touch my life and I see them leave out, healed whole and totally made free amen by the power of god and there's some people that are working for it saying oh god look at me i've been serving in the church i've been ushering i've been doing this for you i've been doing that for you and you better believe it no it's not by works it's simply by grace amen it's a work of grace by grace you are saved it's by god's grace amen we don't work for healing we cannot pay for healing amen we just receive healing the man said just speak the word only so he's saying, Jesus, I know there's power in your words. And Jesus is getting us to understand there's power in what we say. That when we say things, amen, when we decree a thing, we could, you could be in Australia and I could be here in England and I'm speaking God's word over your life, amen. You could be in Africa, America, amen, and I'm speaking God's miracle working power over your life. If you just receive the power of God, if you just receive God's word, if you receive the healing that comes straight from the throne of God, if you just receive, amen, God's healing power. And some of you, you're feeling the heat coming upon your body in the area where you're sick. You're feeling the heat of God coming upon the area or coming upon your head. You're coming upon your side, in your belly, in your stomach. Where some of you, the doctor said that you needed an operation. You'll go back and you'll find out that, listen, you no longer need an operation in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God is the same yesterday, today, forever. He never changes. He looked at the man that was paralyzed, the man that was impotent from his feet. And he simply said to him, in the book of John, will thou be made whole? And he's asking you today, will you be made whole? God wants to make you whole. God is not sitting on the throne saying, oh, you deserve this. Oh, you've done that. I remember what you did in 1967, what you've done in 2009. No, God, he forgets our sins. The Bible says he throws away our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. There are many people you're condemning yourself. You haven't forgiven yourself. And God is saying, the moment you ask for forgiveness, I forgave you. And some of us are reminding God about things that God has even forgotten about. Because he told us in his word, I have thrown away your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. The Bible says if we conf confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God is saying, listen to me, don't remind yourself of your sins. Remind yourself that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have declared you righteous. You have been free. And this faith, the faith of this centurion man, amazed the Lord Jesus. He was saying, I'm a sinner. I'm not even worthy. He said, I'm not even worthy, but you know what? All you need to do is speak. And that's what God wants is simple, childlike faith. That's all God is looking for. Simple, childlike faith. People that will take God at his word and just believe him for who he says he is. That's all God is looking for. People will say, God, I believe you. I believe that you say that by your stripes, I am healed. I believe you when they say, I wish above all they may prosper and be in good health, even as I soul prospers. I believe you. Do you said you behold Satan as lightning fall from heaven and behold, you give unto us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. I believe you, God. When you said you called your disciples and you gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. I believe you. I believe you when you said that the evil must come. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. I believe you. All God is looking for is someone who will take him at his word. The spoken word is power in the word of God. This Syrian had simple faith to believe God that when he speaks, something's going to happen. And I want you to believe God that when you speak, something happens. He didn't have any doubt that when Jesus spoke, something was going to happen. I decree and I declare that when you speak, something is going to happen. 
in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you right now because I believe that God is touching someone. God is igniting someone's faith. Someone that thought that listened to me, God had forgotten about them. I want to let you know God does not forget about you. Your Bible says that the very hairs on your head are numbered. He knows all about you. He knows you're down sitting, you're uprising. He's acquainted with all your ways. He knows everything about you, but yet he still loves you. And if you're willing, if you're willing to just come to him with an honest and open heart and say, God, listen to me, forgive me for every sin. Come into my heart. Make me a new person. Use me for your glory. God wants to touch every area of your life god wants to ignite faith in you just like this centurion had faith in god god to say have faith in me that when you speak things happen you'll pray and you're going to see miracles you're going to see blind eyes open when you pray you're going to see the deaf ears unstop i dare you to pray for the sick i dare you to pray for those in wheelchairs i dare you to go into the hospital and lay your hands on cancer patients i dare you to take God at his word, amen, and start praying for the sick, start speaking God's word of healing, amen, start anointing them with oil, I dare you, amen, to be the disciple that God has called you to be, I dare you, amen, to take God at his word and stand upon his promises and speak the word only, amen, and see servants, see men, see women healed in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that even now today you're igniting faith in many that are listening by the way of this podcast, God, that from today many will rise up, Lord God, in the God-ordained mandate, assignment, and plan, and purpose that you have for their life, and they'll begin to walk in the miracle working power. They'll begin to demonstrate the supernatural in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They'll believe you and know that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. They will begin to demonstrate the miracle working power of God. Then they will know that the Spirit of the Lord is upon them, because if anointed them to preach the gospel to the poor you sent them to bind up the broken hearted and preach deliverance to the captives the open of prison to those that are bound and preach the acceptable year of the lord god i thank you and i praise you that your people will walk in power and demonstrate lord god in the gifts of the spirit lord god healing miracles in the name of Jesus, gifts of faith, working of yes, Lord God, word of knowledge, word of prophecy, word of wisdom, gift of prophecy, tongues of interpretation. God, I thank you and I praise you that your people, Lord God, will see the demonstration of the spirit and power in this generation, Lord God, because this generation needs to see the power of God. Sinners will know that they've been forgiven, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, men and women will come to an understanding. It's by grace that you are saved, through faith and not of works, lest any man should boast. People will know that you're still healing today and you're still setting the captives free today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and his power in the words that they speak. God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that many will rise up today, Lord God, and do their first works. Many, Lord God, that this old father God regressed, Lord God, and many that went back and many, Lord God, that stopped preaching or stopped witnessing, stopped evangelizing, will begin to evangelize again. They'll begin to witness again. They'll begin to speak again. They'll begin to do their first works again. In the name of Jesus, where some had found their identity in ministries or people, God, I thank you and I praise you that men and women of God to find their identity in you and you alone in the name of jesus christ of nazareth yes many will begin to find their identity in you rooted and grounded in you christ jesus and do the works of him that sent you sent them and will finish the work in the name of jesus god i believe you for it god i believe you for it lord god that like the centurion lord god they will know that lord all they have to do all you have to do all they have to do is speak the word only they will know that there's authority and power in the words that they speak god i honor you and i bless you and i leave each listener in your hands and i thank you and i praise you lord god they will see the demonstration of the power of god in their generation because this generation needs to see your power holy spirit we bless you today and we thank you they received your words and their lives will never be the same again in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. The new book by author Kevin Treasure, The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality, out now. Consists of 21 chapters regarding the use, effects, benefits, and consequences of the words we speak and the influence they have on our lives and the lives of those around us. Discover how to hold your tongue in the most trying times. Discover the real power you possess with the words you speak. Discover how what you say has a profound effect on your life. No person desiring success should be without this book. This book will teach you how to live a victorious life. 
which includes 24 winner's mentality points regarding wise words, 17 winner's mentality points regarding anger, 16 reasons why saying nothing is wisdom, 10 ways to frame your future with your tongue, 6 winner's mentality points regarding good health. The book is available in paperback and ebook format. Order your copy today, priced at $9.99. Available from www.kevintreasure.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, and many more. Or call 07903-940-399. The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Get your copy today. Thank you for tuning in to The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review. Check out our website, kevintreasure.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You are born to win.